Hello, hello, hello everyone and uh, welcome to the War Thunder official channel. My name is Mike Gosboom. I'm joined here by Tom aka Oxy and today it is time to check out the new content in the upcoming updates called Alpha Strike. We are on the internal testing server and we are going to be showing you some of the new content, not everything. You'll have plenty of time to figure some of the stuff out by yourself, in fact, in the upcoming dev server, which will also open soon. Pretty soon. So, let's get right into it. Let's start with the US. Absolutely. I can show you the 120S, which is a very... Um, <laughs> it's like a little chibi, little chibi M60. I think it's quite sweet. Uh, so basically, you have the turret of the M1A1 on a, a late pattern hull, and it's a bit strange because it does have the mobility of the M60. I'll give you a little drive around with it. Uh, so really, you've got pretty good firepower. It's, it maintains the same really good reload of the Abrams, uh, but in terms of mobility, you don't quite have that same like really impressive mobility the Abrams has. So it feels a bit weird, um, but pop it behind a hill and you've basically got like a, fund a fundamentally identical uh, offensive vehicle to the M1A1. So that's pretty good, but in terms of hull protection, not so great. Currently right now it does have Gen 2 thermals, it's going to have uh, the regular Gen 1, uh, like the previous standard Abrams. But yeah, in terms of mobility, not that impressive, but for Tenno, you've got this gun uh, with this turret, um, which is overall pretty good. There's not much going on in the hull, so you do have a lot of negative space, so you can potentially tank a couple of shots there. Um, but yeah, it's a nice, weird little vehicle to have. Um, good for lineups. I mean, it's going to work well beyond its BR as well, because you do have that um, firepower, which is always going to be great. Um, but yeah, in terms of survivability, not so much, and it is just weird having an Abrams this slow. Um, but yeah, it's got decent pros and cons. I think it's a nice little vehicle to have. I can see one major issue with it immediately. You could sleep in that turret ring gap. That is it, yeah. It's a hefty, hefty neck going on there. Uh, so yeah, same weak spot as the the regular Abrams, um, but you also have the massive hull as well. But not much ammo going on. I assume those racks are going to be emptied uh, when you take less ammo out. So yeah, you've, it's got pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses. Nice to have at 10 now, I reckon. This is one of the vehicles you can look up, uh, you can look forward to in the upcoming updates. Uh, I believe the M122S will be in the tech tree, right? Yep, tech tree. Can you show the position of it? Yes, it's in um, the sort of prototype -y, uh, USMC side. So it comes after the... Uh, TTS in rank 7. Very nice. All right, next up we have one that has been long awaited and has just been announced in a devlog. Welcome to the game, the F20A. This is, uh, well, an evolution really of the F5. This was in competition with the F16. Only a couple of prototypes were made. Uh, the F16, of course, ended up winning out the competition, but this was essentially a attempt to use some of the existing components of the F5, modernize them, give them access to better weaponry and a much, much better engine to make a small fighter. And in fact, it does have access to some pretty interesting stuff. You have access to up to six AIM 9Ls, huge upgrade over the uh, previous F5 series, which could only carry two on the wingtips. And you also have a radar and access to the AIM 7F. However, do keep in mind, if you take out the radar missiles, you do lose the double slot of AIM 9Ls and you don't have access to any more advanced missiles like the AIM 9M. Uh, you do still have access to your Mavericks, so the B-Type. You also have access to the 30mm gun pod that you can also find on the F5. No guided bombs. Sadly, you have some regular bombs over here, which you can use, of course, given that this is, in fact, a premium aircraft. You can use it to do, well, all your grinding, in fact. In fact, this is the first rank 8 premium aircraft that we are going to have in the game. I'm going to show you quickly how this thing performs in a battle. Oh, something new as well. RRB players, rejoice. We now have a fuel slider. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> it's been years. You now can exactly determine how much fuel you want to take into your uh, battle. Uh, pretty much customizable from minimum fuel load to maximum fuel load. Of course, you do, you do still have access to the old uh, menu selection if you want to use that. Let's say, for example, we just want to check out the uh, performance at minimum fuel. I will also leave it completely empty. I just want to see the raw performance of the aircraft itself. Very cool. 
I'm kind of uh, mixed feelings about this one. See, on mm. one hand, the F20 is one vehicle that I've always wanted to see in the game. On the other hand, I also have a feeling this will be a bit of an easy kill for experienced top tier air players. I think it looks cool. It's got a sleek little design. I mean, I'm quite a simple person, so I like things that look nice, really. So, all good in my book on that front. But yeah. We are playing in realistic mode, by the way, so all the stats, all the performance you see here is in realistic mode. Although, do, do keep in mind, of course, as with all dev streams, as with, as with all preview streams, nothing you see here is final. This is work in progress. You can see the big bold text right above my head. Keep that in mind when uh, looking at bat ratings, armament options, performance, everything like that in general. Now, uh, this chassis can go up to around Mach 1.15 on sea level. It can push further than that, but you are at the risk of breaking your wings off. In fact, it is giving me a warning to do just that. So let's go up. Let's try about a 45 degree climb, I would say. Such a small plane for such a chunky engine. It is, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is like strapping yourself to a rocket, essentially. Got a nice little interior, some MFD screens as well. We are holding our speed very, very, very well in this climb, still doing Mach with 1.05. In fact, let's go even further. Let's go full vertical. That's going to be... I mean, it's, it's quite a forgiving platform, I think. So it is rapid. The power yes. rate on the swing is absolutely insane. Thankfully, since it is, since it does still share some similarities to the previous F5 series, uh, it is also pretty maneuverable. And of course, the at high altitude, I'm not going to have the greatest off chances with uh, maneuvering. So let's go back down. Uh, keep in mind, the flare count is a little bit limited on this aircraft. You only have 45 flares, which is very much below average, uh, especially for this kind of battle rating. Something that you do need to keep in mind. And as far as I'm aware, there's no option of mounting additional flare pods, at least for the time being. Alright, even at supersonic speeds, you can still do 12 Gs. That is not bad at all, actually. That's very forgiving. Let's go a little bit lower. I will deploy my air brake. See what we can do sup uh, subsonically. And I think where this aircraft is going to shine most is in energy retention. Since it, since it has such a light airframe, such a small airframe, and such a powerful engine, I have a feeling you will be able to turn for quite a while. 13G, let's reset our G-lock. 14G? <laughs> Again, keep in mind the flight model my, may be placeholder. It may in fact break its wings off and these kind of turns when it comes to the live server. But energy retention is not bad. Okay, we're losing a bit of speed here. You have some AOA issues. Uh, but we're maintaining around 500 kilometers per hour. Pretty good. That's not bad at all. We can also deploy flaps. Which will bleed our speed off a little bit more. But look at the tight turn. For a jet, this is not bad at all. Very nice. And now, acceleration. Yeah. <laughs> Fair to say this thing is going to be nasty. Imagine an F5 on steroids, because that is essentially what the F20 will be. But enough of F20. We have more things to explore. So let's check out what uh, Germany has on offer. My favorite thing is just crust German stuff. And this is like peak crust German. Uh, this is the... Say the, say the line. <clears throat> Zerstörer 45. Absolutely. So this is one of Germany's final uh, anti-air projects. Um, so there's a lot of, um, well, it's quite a, an obscure anti-air vehicle. It's sort of designed around the same time as the Oswin 2. And um, yeah, the final version, which you may see if you Google it, is uh, it has the Werbel wind turret. Um, but it was never fitted into that was what was the uh, projection for it. Um, but it was, this uh, flak setup was tested on the mobile wagon, which means something weird, doesn't it? It's furniture van. Yeah, so <laughs> it was tested on this platform, two of them, I think. And so that's the version that we have in game. So these are the MK103s, the high velocity uh, versions, which are pretty lethal. Um, but as you can see, in terms of survivability, not really, uh, <laughs> it's not very well protected. You can, though, put these screens up, at least on the sides, uh, which you're not really going to want to do because obviously that's going to really cut into your angles. Um, you know, a low pass from an aircraft can strafe you out. If you're getting attacked from the ground, you can't fire back unless you're firing directly from the front. So, yeah, it's not going to be too useful to have this up. It also isn't the most well-armored either. But even so, you've got a quad MK103 mount. 
Reload's pretty good currently. Obviously, this may change, but you do have the belt of the full um, uh, HVAP. So in terms of going after tanks as well, you do have a lot of potential, but it's incredibly fragile. It's going to get overpressured and splashed by rockets really, really easily. Um, but offensively, really strong. So that's going to be nice for the later lineups. We do also have a new 109 in the current year. Yes. Incredible. Beautiful. So this is the C1 uh, version of the 109. This was uh, came during the 30s when they realized the B version didn't quite have enough uh, firepower because the previous B version just has the machine guns in the nose. And this one cram summons the wings as well. It's a bit of a struggle because the early uh, wings did not really want to accommodate for extra guns. Um, but it's going to be pretty nice. It's a bit more forgiving in terms of firepower. I think the, um, the early 109s, they're not the most powerful, but they're pretty powerful as, as far as lower tier, like sub 2.0 planes go. But the lack of um, spread and the lack of firepower did hurt it a little bit. Basically, the B1 had a biplane element, but the extra spread on this one is going to help out a lot. But as you can see from the speed, it's not, it's still not the most, um, the quickest model, and it's going to suffer a little bit, especially if it's caught on low energy. But it's going to be a nice sort of gap between the B and the first E model, so nice. I like playing the early 109s. It's a nice jump in, uh, in speed over yeah, the nice. uh, biplanes that you get before. It's a cool one. So, uh, nice to have it. But Germany, rejoice. It's not the only plane you get in this update. No, a rare <laughs> moment. You get two. <laughs> this is the Alpha Jet. Uh, in fact, well, you can guess why the update is named the way it is. This is a light attack jet aircraft, also used as a trainer. As you can see, it is a twin seater. Uh, currently uh, uh, occupying a battle rating of 9.0. Now, this aircraft does not have any countermeasures. You also don't have any guided munitions. However, you do have a 27mm cannon with 150 rounds. You have access to the uh, Mighty Mouse rockets, a decent amount of them, and also a few bombs. So this should be a nice light attack option that you can use in ground RB as well as in air RB. If you want to go for bases, you can carry the incendiary bombs, which are enough to take down one base by itself. And then still have a fairly fast photo buffering, fairly maneuverable light uh, uh, aircraft to do gun runs on enemy aircraft with. You got access to a ground target belt. The maximum penetration you can expect here is 64 millimeters with the armored target belt. And interestingly also, you both have a semi-armored piercing high explosive incendiary shell, as well as an APHE shell. So if you find a, for example, IFV in a ground RB battle, this, this should be fairly effective. Yeah, I think so. Good enough. Should be fairly decent. Uh, the position it occupies in the tech tree is as does, right after the Genion to one R3. And don't worry, Germany is not actually the only country getting the Alpha Jet. We have another one shortly, but first, let's check out what the USSR has on offer. Yep, so I can show you the M4 Schilke. This is a later version, and functionally, in terms of the main cannon armament that it usually has, it's exactly the same. Um, but it has four Iglers at the back. Only four of them, you can't reload them currently. Um, so yeah, it's a nice kind of gap to bridge between the, the first Schilke um, and the Strela, which is nice. So you've got a nice lineup at 9.3 and it fits pretty well in there. A bit more forgiving with that as well. Uh, it's nice. I like uh, anti-air vehicles to have a bit of both. And uh, this one certainly has. Model is quite cool as well. In terms of protection, it's mostly superficial in terms of the, uh, the extra bits that it has. Um, looks pretty cool. Looks sleek, modernized version. And um, yeah, nice to have it really, it fits well. You're looking at something a bit more sleek. Just trying to take off here, <laughs> famously hard for me. I'm very surprised I didn't crash into a tree just yet. Uh, we have a new SU-25 model. Uh, this is the SU-25 uh, TM something, I forgot the name, I'm sorry. Um, the SU-25 SM3. This is a upgraded SU-25, this time with proper thermal vision for your guided weapons. This should be an absolute beast in a Grand RB. Also, because it gets access to a new missile. Uh, this is the KH-38M, I believe. There are two variants in game. One is laser guided and one is TV guided. So entirely fire and forget. Let's have a quick look around. Oh, also, we have something new. Oh, not that, <laughs> sorry. We have a new, um, okay, not on this one. It's on the TV guide mission. We have a new uh, interface, actually, in third person for tracking and acquiring targets, which also means that you no longer absolutely need to go into the 
uh, thermal targeting pod to aim your missiles, your TV missiles. You can actually do it in third person and move them with the uh, camera. Pretty nice. All right, let's see if we can actually get a lock on here. I got to go for this guy. It will track moving targets. Absolutely no issue. The missiles do a bit of lofting as well if you fire them at further ranges. I'm not sure what the exact maximum range of these missiles is, uh, but they should be fairly effective at dealing with SPA, especially since you do have now the thermal targeting pod, which for Soviet vehicles is a bit unheard of, really. It's a chunky missile. All right, let's see if we can do a lock on a moving vehicle over there yeah you can see pretty well it's not the highest resolution absolutely but it's fairly workable yeah. five kilometer range or rather five kilometer distance on here missile does a bit of lobbing kind of like the cage 29 and it has fairly decent power as well we're going to go over the stats in a second in the hangar let's have a quick look at the cockpit oh yeah by the way it does have a bit of web. Um, it will overspeed if you go in a straight line, much like yes. some of the previous S-35s. You need to pay attention to that. And you, of course, also have an RWR system. Okay, let's quickly go back to the hangar and check out the stats of the new missiles here. This is a Tech 3 aircraft, by the way. It will occupy the position right after the SU-25T. In fact, it is the ultimate evolution here, as far as what we have in the game. Large amount of countermeasures as well. That is very nice to see. In terms of armaments, it is your pretty standard uh, SU-25 armament. You do have access to the R-73 air missile if you are inclined to, well, not really hunt enemy aircraft, but at least defend yourself. Uh, you have access to TV-guided bombs, as well as this new missile, the KH-38, uh, both in uh, well, um, both in TV-guidance, IR-guidance, as well as in laser guidance modes. And of course, you still have access to your KH-29, both in thermal and in L variants. This should be fairly good for, uh, for ground RB. With the RWR and the thermal vision, you can uh, try and engage SBA from further ranges. Okay, so uh, there's another vehicle we have in here in the lineup. You'll, you'll have yeah. to check out the... Uh, got to save some our, stuff. Yeah, so you'll have to check out the stream of our, of our colleagues, which will be later on today to check that out all right next up we have the uk it's time to rejoice bongs finally little fox friend so this is nice i don't know exactly how well how strong it's going to be uh but it's really nice to have it so this is the fox uh very quick very nimble like it needs to be uh has the same gun as the warrior effectively so you only have uh these two belts have the opds pretty strong in terms of pen but for 7.0, I mean, it's. I think it's one of those vehicles that I think works better in up to is because knocking out a Tiger II with that is going to be hard, but knocking out a Leopard is going to be easy. So it works beyond its BR, but doesn't have a stabilizer, so that is going to catch you out. You need to plan your routes pretty well. If you want to ambush with it, great. I think small vehicles are great for that because it's quite easy to miss them. Um, so it's going to be pretty nice for that. In terms of protection, I'm not. There's no point even showing you. I mean, you already know it's uh, incredibly you can a hole for <laughs> basically. Um, but it's very reactive. Obviously, I have it on a very uh, top crew. But you've got a really fast turret rotation. Uh, it can basically fire infinitely. Um, there's no real long reload for it. It's got the same reloading as the Warrior. Um, my staff works uh, beyond its PR. Currently, it's in the um, far right lines. So it's not in the same line as the Warrior. Uh, it's, I think it's after the Rhino Did at the moment. Show it in Detectory. Yes. Yeah, so after the Eland and the, the Rhino right now. Obviously it may change, but that's where it is currently. Uh, nice. So what are you doing? Well, I would say um, we should probably check the mobility of that on our new map. Also featuring a new helicopter. Uh, this is the Wessex Mark V. Wessex HU Mark V. You may notice it's fairly similar to the H-34 you can find in the American tree. In fact, that is basically what it is. Although, instead of a radial engine, you do now have access to a uh, jet engine, or rather a pair of jet engines, which gives it a little bit more power. In fact, for a helicopter that looks this primitive, it is fairly quick. And we have access to a new missile. Uh, hold on, I need to... Oh, I didn't set it to out here. Ah, fine. Uh, we have two different kinds of missiles. You can carry up to four of the AS-11s, which have around 600 millimeters of penetration. I think a little bit lower than that. We can check the stats in a second in the hangar itself. But we also have access to the new AS-12, which you can only carry two of. But those have a six-kilometer range, 
and 1000 million bits of penetration at battle rating number I believe this helicopter currently occupies should be fairly decent but let's have a look at this new map so this is the new Holland map it is somewhat reminiscent of the Eastern Europe map with the uh oh <laughs> fluffy cats Best beautiful city. It is a little bit reminiscent of the uh, Eastern Europe map with the river that uh, goes through the town. Uh, you can actually drive through the, through the river. It is um, shallow enough for you to be able to drive your tanks through it. And there are a few interesting uh, Easter eggs. Uh, Tom will be showing the uh, perspective on the ground in a second. Um, there's a weird, well, district with some red lights. I'm, I'm really not sure about that. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't. It's, it, it's, it's weird anyway. Uh, there's a nice church. Yeah, we got a nice church. You got some fountains, you got some uh, some nice statues over there. And um, Tom, whereabouts are you actually? I'm near the uh, the, the mall. Ah, the mall. You mean this mall, perhaps? I do. This mall That's that the same one. strangely open. Hmm. Yeah, so this is really quite cool. It's a sort of... Obviously, there's like a bit of conflict going on here. But this building, you can actually go inside of. Um... And you can explore the insides. It reminds me of, um, what's that one, like, liminal space in the bookshop? Kind of reminds me of that. Um, but you can go all the way in here, and there's a lot of, uh, destructibility. You can actually drive through a lot of areas in it. And so even though on the map here it is, like, a big obstacle, you can basically drive through it at almost any angle. Hello. Uh, you saw nothing, it's fine. <laughs> I saw nothing. We'll, we'll ignore it. Um, so, yeah, I like this. You can go all the way through it. It's not really directly in the middle. We're on the battle version right now, but in the other, um, the cap version, I don't believe there's anything sort of dependent on it. But you can, there's lots of different ways to go through it and sort of progress uh, deeper into the map. Lots of different areas. Um, I don't know if you can drive up the escalators to the higher level. I don't think you can. I haven't tried. I don't think so. You can probably, like, jam something. I mean, where does the world as a way? Absolutely. But... I like this. It's nice. There's uh, lots of little places you can hide. Um, and it's just kind of interesting to have an area like this in a War Thunder map. Uh, it's having... because there's not really any interior places. Um, so I think that's really interesting. There were also some new car models I saw. Like a... something... something... The, n n hexa hexagonania, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And a bargain from the, from the people. Uh, I think it's a cricket. Fluffy cats again. Like Fluffy Big. cats, yes. Very nice. Absolutely. Also, can I just mention the fox is going to be an absolute gremlin on this tank, on this map. You can place such hide and seek yeah, on that it's, mall. It's, yeah, it's, it's the really good size for that. That's the thing with small vehicles, is that when you're kind of scanning and looking for tanks, like vehicles that are really small, you don't really process them in the same way. So you can like hide behind stuff that most of the tanks can't. It basically so, looks like a car as well. Yeah, it's got like, in terms of height, it's, uh, it's much lower, so you can definitely do some weird stuff with it, but yeah, in terms of like directional mobility in the uh, like the close range, like dogfighting with it, it's not that great for maneuvering and turning around, uh, but you're very quick. Turret Traverse obviously is really, really quick, so you can react to new threats pretty quickly. Um, you can, you know, pseudo anti-air with it if you want. Um, but yeah, the fire rate, same as the warrior, you can basically keep going, keep going. Um, yeah, no stabilizer on the move. It gets a little, uh, little bouncy. So if you meet something else on the move, it, likely you're going to get clicked on first before you can find a weak spot. So positioning well is going to be really important with it. But yeah, for the up tiers or for maps where your slower vehicles don't work quite as well, it's going to be perfect. So it's a nice little option to have for sure. Little friend. Very nice. Um, since we are on this map, let's have a quick look at the uh, missile options that I was talking about earlier on the Wessex. So this is the base missile that you get, 600 mm of penetration, three kilometer launch range, it's all right for the tier. But then you have these ones, 1,000 mm of penetration, six kilometers range, pretty damn decent. Interesting enough, we have something else here as well. The Buccaneer S2B is joining the game as well. This is the ultimate version of the Buck. You got access to the AIM-9L missiles. Uh, you do have some countermeasures, I believe, as well. A vast array, array of unguided bombs, as well as guided bombs. And a new missile, the AJ-168. Let's quickly take this out. The AJ-168 is a subsonic missile, so it will take a while to get anywhere. But you have access to a targeting pod. Which, sadly, you can't change the zoom. You don't have thermals. It's a black and white pod. 
I think it's an infrared pod, something like that. But these missiles are TV guided, so they can actually acquire targets on their own. And they have a fairly long range. So if I fire, for example, at that A point, which is over nine kilometers away now, I should, uh, if it wants to target, uh, Oh yeah, there's the new uh, target marker as well, by the way. That's gonna be nice. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, we got a little bit too close there, but... You can see the missile go off. It's not the fastest, it doesn't loft, it doesn't do anything like that, but it's a very long burn time. Uh, I think, uh, according to the stack, out a 45 kilometer range, although I don't think it will ever be able to reach quite that far. But it does have a over 170 seconds of guidance time. And a fairly slow burning, but uh, long sustaining missile. I don't like it. It's, it messes with my brain. Uh, I, I don't like the air brake on this thing. I think I mentioned it on the first uh, time we showed it. It just reminds me of like an insect egg. <laughs> I'm not a fan. It is a bit weird. Anyway, other than that, it's basically your standard buccaneer. Don't expect to do any dogfighting with this, even though you have access to the AIM-9. Uh, it will not be doing that well. You do have flares, although not too many, only 30, so do keep that in mind. And the missiles, what they, what they have a fairly long range, the targeting, the tracking isn't exactly the most reliable, and they're also not very maneuverable. They do have a fair amount of explosive filler. In fact, let's go back to the hangar and check out yeah, the stats. That's, that's pretty hefty. But don't expect to be doing any close range fighting with this. Especially also because the targeting pods only has one zoom level. It is fairly zoomed in. You cannot zoom out to, you know, have less of a tunnel vision. All right. So these are the stats of this new missile. You got 88 kilograms of TNT equivalent. Fairly decent. Fairly decent. Uh, you may need to get a direct hit to reliably guarantee a kill. But it is enough explosive filler to get some splash damage. Uh, especially if you if you find a group of YVs or something like that. Fairly long range, 45 kilometer launch range. Wouldn't expect to go quite that far, but you have a 175 um, second missile guidance time. And of course, if you don't want to uh, mess with the missiles, you can also bring your laser guided bombs, which you can use in top down attacks. Or you can even bring a combination of them. Although you will need both of the pods. Keep that in mind. In terms of tech position, it will occupy the slot right after the previous Buccaneer S2. All right, that yes. is it for the UK. Next up, we have Japan. Yep, so I can briefly show you the Type 90 uh, Fuji. So effectively, it's a cosmetically different uh, Type 90B, basically. So I don't think there's anything really different about it, which I mean makes for pretty good premium. Japan don't have many options, and so I think it's fine. It doesn't really take anything away from the tech tree while giving you an option to you know, blast through Japan if you want. Uh, gonna have a good lineup. It's a really nice vehicle on its own. And um, yeah, so it's it's not really the most forgiving in terms of uh, well, positioning for a top tier vehicle, but offensively, it's incredibly strong. Obviously, you're not hindered by the reload. Um, got good firepower. It's it's really good in that regard, but in terms of getting clicked on, it's, it's pretty easy. So, um, but yeah, it's a great vehicle. It makes uh, for a pretty good... Uh, sort of nudge into top two. Uh, not really too much else to say. Obviously you have the camo netting and I think it does have a special skin pre-ordering it, but I don't think we've got that ready yet. Um, yeah, you can get some nice stuff. You can also remove the camo. Okay. You can, yep. So for the same with a lot of these, you can just take it off if you want. And then you can see all the decals underneath. But yep, type 90B. All right. Okay, uh, people, chat. Are, are you here? Are you, are, are you woken up? Are you awake? Wake up, wake up. Wake up, we have boats. Chat, wake up. It's boat time, Mike. It is indeed. This is the IGN Mutsu. Um, well, it has the biggest guns in the game now. Yeah. Big. 410 millimeter cannons. You have a total of eight of them. However, you don't have pure HE shells. So you have the SAP, which has 48 kilograms of a TNT equivalent. It's actually less than some of the other uh, battleships with lower caliber cannons. But you have a very, very powerful um, AP shell here with uh, 732 millimeters of penetration at one kilometer distance. Yes. Uh, this should be fairly decent at dealing with heavily armored enemy battleships. Absolutely. Oh, also something else. You have 24 fairly good Japanese torpedoes. 65 kilometers per hour in the water is fairly quick with a 70 kilometer range. Definitely something you can use as closer ranges as well. All right, so let's move on to China. China gets a new IFV. 
we have the ZBD-04A. This is, in terms of playstyle, similar to the BMP-3. You have a 100mm launcher slash gun in, as your main armament, as well as a 30mm coax. You have access to APFS, yes, for the 30mm, as well as a selection of other rounds for the 100mm. Uh, you got access to thermal sights, scout, it classifies as a light tank, so you can scout the enemy. You have a laser warning receiver, which is also fairly useful, and should overall provide a decent uh, backup to the Chinese uh, lineup at this bet rating. In terms of uh, position, it is right after the PTL-02 in the uh, tech tree, just before the ZLT-11. Also, quickly check out the reverse speed. 70 counts per hour is not Acceptable. too bad. It's, Acceptable. It's, it's okay. You can work with that. Oh. Only free crew, sadly. So any penetrating it on the turret will spell your doom. Let's have a lot of um, sort of stuff in the way of the fighting compartment, though. So you could possibly tank a few weaker shells there. Um, one shotting it through the turret might be a bit hard, but it's also very tall. I think it's deceptively tall for what it is. Like it's a very it is very boxy. Yeah. yeah. So not quite as stealthy as the BMP3, I guess, but. Offensively pretty good. It's got the better darts. Um, Lots of space in the back as well. Yeah, so there's some potential for surviving with it. But yeah, I wouldn't count on it. Up to 12 times zoom. And of course, your thermal vision as well, which uh, the thermals apply to only the gunner. No tank commander thermals. All right, next up we have Italy. We do indeed. So I can show you the Centauro uh, RGO. Basically, uh, much like a lot of the uh, the premiums, it's it's very, very similar. Uh, the only real difference, or the main one, you've got a different, well, you've got a shield for the machine gun, and the turret armor is a little better as well. Um, it's not going to change too much. You're not going to be able to stop any, uh, well, main shells. Um, what you do have is slightly better protection against auto cannons. So, again, it's probably not going to save you. They can still get through, but it may give you that extra, like, half a second to click on what you're fighting. So... A bit different. It's a bit heavier though as well, so that's going to impact too. But in terms of the vehicle for what it is, it's, you've got a really good reload, great mobility, the gun is very, very forgiving, thermals are good, it's uh, got a lot of agency around the map, but I just find sort of changing direction really hard when I've been playing it, but um, yeah, it works on lots of maps, works well wherever you're going to put it really. Um, mobility is one of the most important things to have for tanks, especially around the high BRs, you can do a lot with it. Uh, it's a really nice vehicle. The Chintors are, are also just some damn good looking vehicles. They are. They look mean. It's a nice look. Long friend. Great. That is a weird uh, amount of uh, new aircraft you have in the lineup as well. Yeah, so we have some Hungarian friends who are joining. Uh, currently, we just have them above 5.0. Obviously, there's plans to add uh, quite a few interesting vehicles uh, before that, but at the moment, we have these for the later BRs. And so. I think it makes sense. I mean, that was sort of the, the later kind of World War II era, kind of lacked a little bit for the cast. They had some, some fighters, the P-47, um, but not really too much uh, reliability. So the Yak-9P is pretty good. You can mount the 37 in it. Um, so the gun cast, it's, it's pretty okay. Uh, IL-10 as well, same thing. Tu 2 is probably one of the most good and forgiving bombers in the whole game. <laughs> so that's a really good option too. And we have um, the jets as well. Nice skins on them too. But currently, I don't think there's skins ready to show you, but a lot of them have... Uh, alternates, which look pretty nice. Let's see, I've got all these here too. But you probably have the shiniest example. I do indeed. Uh, Italy is also getting access to the Hungarian Jazz 39. Um, it is a C variant, so it is similar to uh, the other C variant we already had in the game. However, it does bring some new toys. In fact, you got some new Mavericks, the AGM-65G and the AGM-65H. Now, if I recall correctly, the G variant um, is basically, instead of the shaped chart you have in, in all the other Maverick variants, this is a semi-armored piercing HE warhead. So it's, it behaves a bit more like a bomb than a shaped charge which may be beneficial in some situations. There may be some overpressure here, thanks to the uh, high amount of explosive filler. At the same time, it may struggle a bit more with um, defeating very heavy armor. It is something you will have to try out on the dev server, whether you find this more reliable or not. You also have the hedge variant, which is, again, a shaped charge. However, this one does have a vastly improved 
uh, optical tracking, not an optical tracking. It's a CCD system, a tracking system, uh, which was specifically designed to be more reliable in desert environments and should provide you more accuracy in War Thunder as well. Other than that, you have your um, standard grip and loadouts. You have access to the AIM-9M as well as the uh, combined flare pods, which will bring your total up to a great big, big number. You got some guided bombs, Paveway 3 and Paveway 2s, as well as uh, these Paveway 2s, and you still have access to your flare pods and your regular bombs. Should be a very, very good option, in fact, for um, top tier ground RB as a CAS option, as well as for general air superiority, and of course in air RB, the Griffin is, as, is an absolutely yes. amazing fighter, which I absolutely love to use. All right, next up, France. France. Small AA friend for the lower ranks, currently at 3.0. Uh, in terms of firepower, it's offensively identical to the M16 and other quad mounts, uh, so it's pretty good there. It's nice to have, because before this point, the anti-airs that you had were not quite as easy to use as this one is going to be. Uh, it's a really forgiving mount, you've got a great volume of fire, great fire rate, does a decent amount of damage as well to aircraft, despite just being a machine gun. Um, but in terms of the difference between the previous 40mm uh, anti-air, much, much more usable. Uh, which is nice. So the crew member is exposed at the top, you do have some more in the hull. Obviously armor is not that impressive, but you can probably take a little bit of a heavy machine gun fire and probably tank a couple of shots if they shoot right into the middle because it's full of dead space. Um, so these two at the back are probably going to survive a decent amount of times when you get hit. So one-shotting it is quite hard, so it does have a decent amount of artificial survivability, which for an AA is actually pretty good. So yeah, I think it's going to be nice, definitely better than the M16. Um, yeah, it's a nice uh, little anti-air vehicle, it's going to suit you pretty well for the middle ranks until you get something better. Um, yeah, decently forgiving, nice to use, fits well in the lineup with uh, 105 Sherman, your light tanks and stuff. Why so, do all the tanks and stuff, they just look so stubby? Can't the complain. The M60, 120S, this thing, they just look like boxes. They do, well, I mean, it's a good shape. Can't complain about that. It's a Chibi nice tanks. little... Oh, chibi tanks. Damn weeps. So this is why you've got more body pillows. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> France is in fact the second nation to get the Alpha Jet. So this is the E variant. I'm going to do a quick test flight just with the gun pod. You can actually run this thing completely naked without any gun pods or any armaments whatsoever. Essentially turning it into a recreational jet plane without any countermeasures, any weapon, any anything really. Uh, let's have a quick look at the cockpit. Decent model, looks nice and clear. Um, you do have some decent visibility behind you if you happen to be a sim player and you have some kind of uh, head tracking. You should be able to look behind you fairly effectively. And now let's see what this thing can maneuver like. Roll rate is pretty good actually. Yeah. Very, very good. Speed. And turn is also decent. This is a fairly light uh, tech aircraft. Yeah. So maneuverability overall should be pretty decent, as well as your roll rate. Speed isn't going to be the best, you're not really going to be going supersonic in this thing, uh, but you are still a jet at 9.0. And of course you have your 27mm cannon. With not too much ammo, but a fair few seconds Enough, of firing time. Yeah. That, should, that should be fairly The pod for it does look a bit weird though. It does, yeah, <laughs> it does. But yeah, there you go. Also, nice. air brakes. Oh, that's a weird average position. Huh. Ah. This is better than the Buccaneer. Well, anything's better than the Buccaneer. <laughs> so true. So true. All right, let's quickly see where this is in the tech tree. Before we move on to Sweden as well. In the tech tree, the Alpha Jet will occupy the position right in between the F-86K and the F-8E. And the armament, at least as it currently stands, is exactly the same as the German variant. Very nice. All right. Sweden. What do we have for Sweden? Sweden. I can show you the Christian II, which is basically the same as the uh, SCRV-121. Some slight differences. Um, I believe this was sort of a... I think it came from trying to like modernize the other uh, 121s they had before the 122s came in, but they realized we just have 122s, so... It's not really much point. Um, but yeah, this is a couple of changes. The smoke grenade launch is different, uh, different cover at the back. So functionally identical for, for the most part. Caminet as well. Um, yeah, it's nice. You've got a really strong lineup at 10.3. Uh, it's going to fit nicely there. Uh, and as well, like it's one of those vehicles that 
wouldn't really work in the tech tree because we already have enough vehicles that basically play the same way. So I think it's a perfect, uh, another perfect top tier premium. Uh, nice to have for the uh, the high ranks, and yeah, Sweden's well. getting a bit scarier as the higher it's, ranks. Yeah, pretty meaty. <laughs> All right, now um, um, you may know I'm a big fan of the um, the UH-60, the American Black Hawk helicopter. And I think I just found my new favorite. And last update we introduced the DAP, the American Attack version. Israel is also getting one. Um, Chat, do you see something special about this particular helicopter by any chance? You don't get four, you don't get eight, you don't get 12. You get 16 Spike ER fire and forget missiles. <laughs> okay, let's have a look here, shall we? So. The first things first, uh, we do have access to the Hellfire. Uh, the Hellfire, one, um, not the, no, these are the advanced Hellfires with the 1200mm penetration tandem warhead. Same range as the Spikes. Now, the Spikes have way less speed and they have a little bit less penetration. They are still a tandem heat warhead. The thing about the Spikes is they are completely autonomous. You don't need to keep your laser pointed at the target in order to hit. You can simply fire one of these missiles off at each enemy that you see and get back behind cover, which makes this a fairly potent weapons platform. We're going to take it into a quick test flight so I can show off this capability. Of course, mounted on a uh, UH-60 uh, platform, the UH-60 isn't... Well, the best. It's not too maneuverable. It is fairly large. This uh, started out life as a transport helicopter, really. Let's go into here. All right. So let's see. Oh, we got some targets over there. How about? I don't know. We fire one over there. And oh, there's some tanks. Want to fire some over there as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind, at least for my testing that I have done, uh, the spike ERs are not too reliable in their damage. So you may need to fire off two per target if you want to have a more reliable kill. But as you can see, you can kind of just fire them all off. And if you do have a radar SBA taking an interest in you, you can just go right back behind cover and not have to worry about your missiles, which will do their own thing. Stuff. Beautiful. So yeah, Israel, you're eating good. Okay, now that is it for... Actually, no, it's not. We're One final tank. friend, a final friend. Uh, this is the new Israeli high, uh, high tier premium. Uh, the Ram... I'm going to say it wrong. You know what it is. It's basically uh, one of the Makava 3s. I think it's similar to the D because it has the extra armor on the side. It's like the same to the American uh, event vehicle version. So yeah, compared to these, it's got the extra armor on the side. Um, but apart from that, it's very, very similar to the existing versions, at least um, offensively. You have more smoke grenades than you could ever need. Um, it does have, uh, well, it's this version uh, of the vehicle does in real life have an APS system, but we don't have that in game because it wouldn't really fit very well. So basically what this uh, does is if the tank detects the laser, the turret will then turn towards where the laser is coming from and deploy the smokes automatically. In this game, that would not be uh, too effective and probably just it's a way that you can sort of accidentally grief yourself um, by that feature. So that's not present uh, with this particular version. But in terms of having a nice high tier premium, it's offensively great. You've got the, uh, well, a little bit more armor on the sides of the turret. Probably won't change too much, but there's going to be a couple of instances where it will probably save you. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Cool looking. Looks very mean like a lot of the top two ones. It does. <laughs> then again, to me, the Merkvals kind of all look very similar. I can't yeah. distinguish them very well. Yeah, like so for a lot of the so the intermediary versions, I, I'm not that good at it either. But yeah, this one definitely looks a lot meaner. This one's good. All right, so that is it for vehicles for the time being. If you have some questions in the chat, now is the time to post them. We'll see if we can answer a few of them. Uh, there are a few more things to talk about, however. So firstly, this is the tech reposition of the AH-60, the easy ready one, after the Lahatut at 11.3 as it currently stands. Again, keep in mind, bad ratings are placeholder. Things may still change by the time the update comes out. Now, we have talked about the fuel slider for aircraft. We've shown that on the F-20. It is, will be available to, uh, I believe, all aircraft. Um, in case you haven't seen it yet, you can now choose the exact amount of fuel that you want to take into battle, not just test flights, also into actual battle. This is entirely integrated. 
Uh, oh yeah, there's a new feature for Grunt RB, which may be interesting for pilots. Have you ever been in the situation where uh, you spawn your cast aircraft and you immediately get killed by someone who's camping your air spawn in Grunt RB? Well, no longer. Uh, there will now be a protection zone similar to the one for tanks, which will show anyone who is camping your air spawn. So you have a well better chance of actually doing something instead of dying immediately. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we have a tank fire rework. Uh, I need to check the, uh, the, the the data we had for that. I'm sorry, give me a second. Yeah, I've not tested it. I believe it should um, tell you the amount of time the fire, the external fire is going to burn for, but I don't, I've not tested it. As so far I as I believe understand, that's what that so is. there was this issue before where sometimes you took a, uh, a hit, a fire, for example, an ammo blowout. Uh, which didn't give you a timer and uh, you couldn't extinguish it with a fire extinguisher. You would just burn for a while without any idea why you couldn't extinguish it or for how long you were going to burn. This will not change. Uh, there will be an interface that will tell you how long that fire will be active for so you can prepare accordingly and plan out your repairs. But yeah, we also have really worked the way that uh, shell reloading works on capture zones now. I can actually quickly show this maybe. Yeah, that one's nice. So you may recall from our presentation of the low set this particular vehicle had an issue where unless you fired off all the missiles you could not reload your missiles on a capture zone now you can and in fact no longer does it take five minutes as you are in a capture zone even if you have only one missile missing the uh, capture zone will start the rearmament process it's also way quicker now and the interesting thing is, it doesn't matter if you fire off again, it doesn't interrupt your reload. It will continue, and it will replenish all of your missiles in one go. So it should make uh, vehicles that uh, have low ammo counts and that yeah. depend on reloading a lot more effective. SPA as well, this will also affect uh, uh, belts, missiles, tank shells, anything that had a previously clumped together reload that wouldn't initiate until you had all your ammo already expended now can reload even if you only have fired off one munition should be fairly good uh there are some new testing missions also we can quickly check those out some new tutorial missions for guided munitions actually maybe you can show off uh, one of those I, I don't think you've done them yet so this will be a proper i don't uh, know i've got the keybinds for my mouse uh, <laughs> should give it key buttons? we'll see i mean if you can't do it I'll... i think because i have all of oh, it on my well. on my shoulders well shoulder buttons not my actual shoulders uh the uh, Christian two has the same rounds as uh, the one two one, so it's they're the same. Right, let's quickly check out the testing mission then, shall we? Da -da -da -da. Uh, so you got new testing missions for the TV missiles, for laser guided bombs, for TV guided bombs, for all the good stuff. In fact, maybe we can check out the one on the Buccaneer. These are accessible via the modifications menu. So if you are ever encountering a new munition type you never tested before, you can now check them out. I believe this should cover now most, if not all, of the guided munition so. types. Yep. And let's have a quick look at the tutorial here. Alright, what will it tell us to do? Okay, in my, key, in my case I have the activate targeting point with my K button. Let's switch to my camera, zoom in, which I can't in this particular aircraft, but that's fine. Activate the seeker and launch. Nice. So yeah, it will teach you how to use guided munitions. It will teach you how to use missiles, bombs, uh, both against aircraft and against ground targets. And should be fairly good. Yeah, I can see this missile is fairly slow. <laughs> there we go. The Hungarian MiG-29, we can have a squeeze at. I don't believe he gets the R-73, sadly. This is what you can take out. At present. Oh, something that may be very interesting to the uh, spookstons among you, maybe. Have you ever run into the situation where you had an amazing Grand RB game and, uh, well, you had enough spawn points for a nuke? But it meant you had to exit your current vehicle and then wait a few seconds until you could spawn Your KD is ruined. Yeah, your KD is ruined. Well, no more. Uh, we are introducing a new mechanic for the new aircraft in Grand RB. It will now be a call-in directly from, well, your action button. You don't need to J out of your vehicle anymore. Uh, as soon as you get enough points, you can simply call it in much like you do aircraft in arcade mode. 
there will be a short uh, countdown timer, which will then uh, teleport you directly into the cockpit of your nuclear bomber. Hopefully that'll allow you to be a bit quicker and hopefully that will reduce the amount of times that uh, you just run out of time in the match before you can drop your nukes. But overall, it should also help your KD. Speeds you up and means you can now technically, I guess, nuke yourself. So True. I it's didn't curious. think about that. <laughs> okay, shall we have a quick uh, last look at the new map as well? Sure. Uh, uh, zoom around. I'm going to bring something a little bit faster than the Fox. Very well. Uh, since we are here, actually, hold on. I can't just show it to you quite yet. Going to get into there, and I don't think there's anything I can't show here. Okay. Uh, there are multiple variants of uh, the Holland map. It's called North Holland. You got the domination uh, map. This currently, at least as it is laid out, it cuts off this right side. So this is a no-go zone. This is also where the mall is, I believe. Actually, the mall's over here. I don't know. It cuts off some of the sides here. Battle mode will use both sides of the river. And then you got also some single cap zones. And regular domination as well. Uh, we can check out the battle map again. I will invite you real quick. I believe I can. Thank you. And we can have a, a quick zoom around here. Wonderful. All right. In the meantime, let's see. Uh, you will have to see the um, the uh, the stream of our colleagues to uh, to check out the TA to UD. And in fact, not just the TA to UD. We have actually uh, saved a few surprises, hmm. namely something regarding replays. And that's really stuff. cool. That yeah. is actually really cool. So I've got some quite cool. You will have to watch while the stream as well to uh, to get access to that. All right, the other spawn layouts. Let's spawn over here on the left side. I'll go on the other side. Oh, Prime, kind of. I can, yeah, and the layout is somewhat reminiscent of Eastern Europe with the uh, rivers snaking through the middle. At the same time, it does play entirely differently. The town is much bigger. Uh, you got an entire mall to play around with. And the river is also shallow enough to be able to drive through. You're not limited to only the bridges. You can just drive straight through the water. There's lots of nice environmental detail as well for this map. Lots of stuff you can look at. <laughs> I'm so happy to see this, by the way. Um, this is the car that I told myself as a kid was going to be your first car I ever buy. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. It's a wagon, wagon folks. Cricket, yes. But Wonderful. Don't worry about it. Anyway, you got a little parking lot over here. Sadly, you can't actually make your way up to the second level. The access ramp to that has collapsed. There'll be a way. There'll be a way. Someone will always find a way. Let's be completely I'll figure it out. Here. here we have the mall again that Tom showed off earlier. Honestly, this is the most interesting aspect to me. It's something that's never really been done before. A building this big, you can actually really, really explore. Yeah, it's, it's strange to go inside a building in a tank. Or in a, well, in your case, but... What do you mean? Yeah, it's it's clearly a tank. Yeah. Oh, wait, by the way, crumbling uh, crumbling walls? Yes, you can go through those. Absolutely no issue. Well, unless you're in a Type 93, which is very light. <laughs> but I can just ram them more way through. Beautiful. And, uh, well, I guess we do have to show it, don't we? I don't know where exactly it is. Uh, I, I, I do, sadly. Um, well, you're about to see. We have a nice little church over there. Uh, there's a particular aspect of Dutch culture which is represented here on, on, on this map. I guess you can count as a little Easter egg of sorts. Uh, where about is it? I think it's through here, then through here. Got it memorized, he knows. Uh, <sighs> I'm not sure what that says about me. <laughs> I tell you, I'm trying to find it. Um, yeah, look at this nice statue. It's nice. Yeah. That's all right. It's, it's so nice. Anyway, there's some weird lighting over here. I'm not sure what this is about, to be honest. It's it's weird. Um, I mean, nice and moody. You can probably get some nice screenshots on here. Yeah. You know, should be fine. Um, sure. Got, got some souvenirs. And you can, ri you can rent a bike. You got a pharmacy. Very important. Very nice. I wonder how this will look at night, actually. Hmm. Oh, yeah, we should have done that. I'll be plenty mm. of time to test around. Yeah, well, you guys can test it out yourself on the upcoming dev server, which I guess I should mention. Uh, dev server. We are planning on opening the dev server today. In fact, if all goes well, it should go live just around the time that this stream ends. So if you want to have a... 
That is menacing. You're just T posing into the audience. It is quite, uh, yeah. Uh, it's an aggressive anyway, vehicle. Uh, Death server. You can check it out soon. I I'm just gonna go away. Good goodbye. You do look very cinematic. I do. Ah! All right. Hmm, that looks similar. I wonder why. Mm. Don't worry, it's about for it, it, it's it's fine. Uh, keep in mind, so everything we've shown you on this dev stream is not final iteration. There are there may still be things to come that are not ready yet. Uh, there is the upcoming dev server, which should hopefully get updated as well to include some of the new stuff. That is a very nice poster. Yeah. Um, better ratings and all the good stuff is all placeholder. Keep that in mind. I believe that is going to be it for us today. Unless chat has some something very very important that they need answered. Perhaps. Uh, Waffle, for the time being, the Hungarian Gripen is the only one with the new missile. Doesn't mean that other aircraft cannot get it, but at the time, at least at the moment, it is the only one. Uh, the SU 25 SM 3 modifications. We can have a quick look at that. I'll go back to the hangar and check it out. The TADUD is in fact here, but you'll have to watch the stream of our colleagues to watch that. And an interesting new feature with replays as well. A very cool feature with replays, in fact. That's going to be good. All right, here are the modifications for the SU-25SM3. It is fairly similar to the previous uh, SU-25, except you do get access to this new KH-38 missile. Right, Fox Freeze, I think we can talk about that, actually. Uh, Fox Freeze, the medium-range active radar homing missiles. Not really coming this update just yet. We have talked about adding those at some point in the future. What we are going to do is have a testing event. I'm not sure if it will be ready for this dev server. It may be. Yeah, I'm not sure. You'll have to we'll watch see. out the news for that. Uh, but yeah, you will soon be able to test out the active radar homing missiles before we put them into the game proper. I'm just having a whale of a time driving around. It's, it's too distracting. There's a lot of detail on this map. I really like it. There is indeed. All right. A quick overlook of the tech tree positions of the aircraft, the new Hungarian aircraft. Uh, mentioning again, as Tom mentioned before, we are working on introducing some native Hungarian designs. Just not yet. Okay. So, IL-10, TU-2, Yak-9P. You can see it on the screen, of course. These are the locations of the Hungarian uh, aircraft in the Italian tech tree. And once again, the JAS-39 is also unique in that it does get access to both a semi-armor-piercing HE warhead, AGM-65 Maverick, as well as a AGM-65 with still a shaped charge warhead, but with better tracking. This should be fairly good in ground RB. Well, I believe that is all that we have time for. Uh, once again, a reminder, we are planning on, open up, on opening up the dev server today. You should be able to download it right now. And it should go live, if all goes well, right around in a few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, you can also wait for the dev stream of our colleagues, which will show the, uh, well, the TA, the UD, the replay features, and maybe talk about some other stuff we didn't quite have time for today. Thank you very much for watching the stream. This has been the Waffle Official Channel. And... Have fun this weekend on the desktop. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Enjoy.